Hi, and welcome to Wrench Enough, where we tackle the projects and demonstrate the procedures that you, our customers, ask us to do. We've got two very interesting projects today. One, we're going to be looking at remanufactured battery packs for hybrid electric vehicles, like this Toyota Prius. And then we're going to be looking at the scan tool technology required to meet today's diagnostic challenges. So let's get started. The fact of the matter is that high voltage battery packs on hybrid electric vehicles are starting to need service. The oldest ones came to us in 1999. Technicians today have a lot of options though for servicing these battery packs. We can go to the salvage system and get used ones to put in the vehicle. We can get pieces and parts from the internet to remanufacture these things in our shops if we want. But today I'd like to consider a factory remanufactured unit and to help us with that is Dimitri from Dormant Products and he's going to help us understand that. So thanks for being with us. Tell us all about these remanufactured batteries from Dormant Products. Thank you very much for having us. The remanufactured batteries that Dorman Products sells, these are uh, nickel metal hydride batteries. This particular vehicle is a Gen 2 Toyota Prius. This battery's failure mode primarily is based on heat. Um, heat is really the biggest culprit for failure on most electronics. The nickel metal hydride chemistry inside of these batteries also wears with time. As you were mentioning, these vehicles have been on the road and in service for a very long time. The battery's purpose is to basically function as a repository for energy. So when the vehicle needs hybrid drive assist, it pulls energy from the battery and runs the hybrid drive motor. When you're braking and you're using regenerative braking, its function is to store energy for later. And with wear and change in chemistry in the battery, a process called crystallization, it actually increases the internal resistance of those battery packs. And instead of the energy being stored inside of the battery pack, it's actually being lost to heat. Heat again, as I mentioned, culprit for a lot of failure. The other thing is these batteries are actually cooled by cabin air. A lot of people don't realize that. So everything that is inside of the cab of the vehicle is basically susceptible to contaminating the battery. So if you have pets or you have a dog that runs around in the vehicle a lot, the hair that's in that cabin can actually get forced into the battery and cause the battery to not appropriately cool itself. That can cause heating and the heating will cause the battery chemistry to change and fail. We need to actually take a look at what's inside of the battery pack so you can point out those areas and the various different uh, modules that are going to have crystallization processes and things like that. Now look, don't do this. It says right here, warning, do not open the battery case. If the case is open, warranty is null and void. So you don't want to do this. We're going to take the cover off to show you what's on the inside and I've got the engineer from Dorman here to keep us out of trouble. There are several tamper-proof labels on the battery, and when they are cut, it does void the warranty of the battery. But since we're going to take the cover off, I'm going to cut these, and now the battery warranty is void on this particular battery. So don't be doing this in your shop. <laughs> Even though the service jack has been removed, as an extra margin of safety, I'm going to do a zero voltage check across these terminals to be absolutely sure that the battery is safe to work on as we explain the various different components inside the battery. And we can see that we're at zero voltage, so it's completely safe to work on. Let's get going. So, Dimitri, tell us how these battery packs fail over time. Absolutely. So now that we got the cover off of it, you can see that the battery is basically built by a series of prismatic modules. There are actually 28 in this Gen 2 Prius battery. And all these modules are wired in series. What that means is that this module and this module are wired in a sequential fashion to combine to create the high voltage that will drive the vehicle. What it also means is that each one of these modules has an amp hour capacity of six and a half amp hours. If one of these modules ends up getting weak or failing, the entire pack now is compromised. So let's say in this entire battery pack, one of the modules has a capacity of only four amp hours. That means the entire pack now only has a capacity to store four amp hours of energy and disperse four amp hours of energy to the motor. The battery ECU that's mounted right here in our battery doesn't have the capability of selectively charging one module. So that is one of the primary failure modes, is an out of balance. And typically, once the out of balance between the weakest module and the, and the strongest module exceeds 20%, it's called the delta SOC of the battery pack, it will actually trigger a malfunction indicator and disable the hybrid system. Now, one of the causes for one of the modules falling out of balance can be, like I mentioned before, heat. 
Heat and chemistry changes are really the culprits for failure on these batteries. And the heat is brought on by contamination. We were talking earlier about contamination from the cabin air in the vehicle, if you had pets, or if you drive in a very dusty environment. Between each one of these modules, you can actually see there are small fins. Those fins allow airflow to come in from the bottom of the battery to the top of the battery and actually cool these modules. Well, if you introduce a whole bunch of hair or dust or debris into that, that battery will now run hotter and actually change the chemistry inside of it. As we spoke earlier about the crystallization that can occur inside of the module, increasing its resistance, which is kind of a, a vicious circle. It'll actually increase the resistance, create even more heat, then more crystallization, and it gets worse and worse. And speaking of crystallization, the potassium hydroxide that's in here over time is going to leak out a little bit, isn't it? It's very, very caustic. Absolutely. And it's going to have an effect on the wireframes and the connections. So how do you overcome that sort of a problem? Well, we can remove the cover and we can inspect some of the changes that Dorman's made to our remanufactured battery. As we were talking about earlier, these batteries are cooled by cabin air. So on a rainy day or on a snowy day when there's high humidity inside of the cabin of the vehicle, you have high, hot, humid air being pushed around these exposed metal parts that have electricity running through them. So it's really kind of the perfect storm for, for corrosion to occur, and corrosion brings heat. So what we do is every single one of these bus bars, if you look closely, you can see, actually connect the modules to each other. This is how we create the series circuit we were talking about before. All those bus plates are actually replaced in Dorman batteries. And what we use is, instead of using the factory exposed copper, solid copper bus plates, we use a solid core copper with a nickel plating on it. The nickel plating is what keeps corrosion from forming on it. We also, every single one of the wire connections, including the small gauge wire taps, these wire taps, by the way, guys, are how the battery control ECU is able to monitor each one of these battery module voltages to be able to determine what the delta SOC of the battery is or what the state of charge of the battery is. So each one of those on ours are fully crimped and soldered, as well as the high current being soldered to make sure that corrosion is not a problem on our batteries. Well, Dimitri, can you tell us a little bit about the plug and play capability of these Dorman high voltage battery packs? Absolutely, Jim, I'd love to. So as you were mentioning earlier, there are a couple of choices that professional service technicians have for servicing these batteries. At Dorman, we believe we've brought the best option to the aftermarket. And what that is, is basically a ready to install plug and play replacement. For example, if a technician wanted to purchase a Toyota replacement battery, they would actually only receive the module pack. The module pack is strictly the pre-assembled modules. They have to transfer over all their electronics though. So the battery ECU as well as the output stage relays have to all be transferred from the existing battery to that replacement battery. The Dorman unit is not only complete with all those electronics, but it's also full end of line tested and vehicle simulated tested. That allows the technician to know that that battery is ready to install and that there are no possible failures inside of the battery control ECU or any of the output stage relays. We also reinitialize any ECU that needs to be reinitialized prior to installation. That means you don't even have to have a scan tool to install this battery. We've taken care of all of that ahead of time. And that makes it a lot easier to be able to service it as a unit. That is great. Well, what about a warranty? Um, Dorman actually is proud to offer a three-year non-prorated warranty on this battery, um, excluding fleet vehicles. Okay, Dimitri, let's get this core set back. All right, we've checked everything off on our core return checklist to make sure we've done everything right. We're ready to put it in the box. Okay. You wanna make sure when you receive your battery that you look through the checklist, the pre-installation checklist, as well as fill out your warranty card and send that into Dorman to make sure we can track the warranty on the battery. A lot of my customers have been asking, since technology is changing so much, the different things to consider when buying a new scan tool. That is a great question, Eddie, and so many technicians have asked exactly the same thing. So to help us with that today is Gary DeLuca from Autel, and he's going to help us walk through the progression of technology, at least from Autel's standpoint. How are you doing, Gary? Good, Good Jim. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Well, this was the first one, right? That's correct. Tell us about that. The DS708 came out roughly about three years ago. And what's unique about the, the 708 th three years ago, it was kind of ahead of its time. It was a CE platform. And it was fast, simple, accurate, and affordable. So why did we progress to the next level? If there wasn't a big change in hardware, the technician still could fix the vehicle if he had the proper software. OK, so um, what happens then is if there's no real significant change in hardware or the need to change hardware, the focus from Autel has been on software, keeping That's up with the software necessary to fix the cars and provi providing all the information we need. That's correct. But 
Now there was a need for a change in hardware because of Android technology, which we can all use, and that led us to the next level. Well, now here's even a bigger one. So why is that? The screen is bigger, but the platform is the same, exactly the same. So for someone that wants something that's small, um, simple, uh, affordable, and powerful, here's the tool here. But what's unique about this compared to this one is the, the Maxi Sys, we can do more add-ons to the tool. So for instance, this one here doesn't have an ethernet port. This one does. All right, so here is another great example of hardware had to change because we have the J2534 boxes and things like that. So, yep, we've got an upgrade, we've got a bigger tool that can support more functions, more features. Before we go any further though, tell us about the extra little boxes here. Well, we added a Bluetooth VCI. So this tool here, which is the VCI Vehicle Communication Interface, with the latest Bluetooth can go 500 feet from the car. No kidding. And it can automatically detect the Bluetooth, so there's no setup needed for the technician. You brought a J-Box. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, what's unique about our J-Box is Autel made, made the J-Box, and we made it special. And what's special about it, we incorporated Bluetooth inside it. So not just it's a J-Box that we can use every other manufacturer's information, paper instance, and put it on a laptop, but now we can use this J-Box with our Android system to have that conductivity to the car. So when you purchase a 908P, not only do you get the new J-Box, you also get special software in the 908P or the professional. It automatically links. So you, the, the, the consumer doesn't need to do anything. Turn the tool on, it links automatically. Tell us a little bit about the unique software in this device. In this case here, we're looking at data pids. And we're able to now display the data pids in many different ways. We're actually looking at a data stream from a, a Nissan truck that's about oh, 50 feet or so away out in the parking lot. And uh, we're looking at the pit of a mass airflow sensor right at this present moment in time. Tell us a little bit more about the software and how you manipulate that. It's how we display it. What can we do to enhance that data pit? And some of the things here is, uh, as you see on the screen, we can enhance it by changing the X and Y axis. So if I wanted to uh, increase or decrease the speed, I can do that here and capture more or less. Or even if I wanted to increase or decrease the gain, I can do it right here. So now it's gained right off the screen. And there it goes. Unlike older style scan tools, we would have to go to custom data stream and turn all the PIDs off except the one that we wanted to see to make it even seem like it's in real time and fast enough to, to use the data. Here, we don't have to bother with that. This is fantastic. Other things that it can do, Jim, is I can go back into our regular mode. We can look at an analog. We can look at a digital. We can look at it almost like a scope or, uh, and display it on a graph. The other thing is MaxiFix. Can you imagine 100,000 users all over the world using our tool? And as long as they're online, they can post anything in our uh, Autel forum, which for free, and it's a cloud. It's all cloud-based. So it's something that we decided to, let's bring this tool to the next level. And that's what we did. You hear what he just said? It's kind of like IATN, but for free. That's really fantastic. That's correct. Show us how we get the information, though. If you look at the bottom, the bottom is really ease of use of all the icons. And since it's Android, we can go right, find out what's open, go right to Modal Logic, look up what we want, and then go right back to the car if we wish uh, and see what we need to, to get done. This tool records everything that you do for the for that for the time you're using on the car, we can go right to the screen that we want. Say shop manager, hit shop manager, and can you imagine a tool that can record everything that is done in the shop and put it into the cloud? I'm going to go back to 2013, and I want to look at this Toyota Rav4. It gives us the VIN number, tells us when we did it, and it gave us the codes and stored it for us right in the cloud. So not only could we do this three cars back, we could do it for every car that we hooked the tool up to. What if I wanted to take a picture or a screen grab 
of something I did back then, does the uh, system store that as well? You can actually store voice recordings. So you can actually, it's got a camera, a five megapixel camera, where I can take a picture of anything that I have done on the car, store it within this information base, and then put it to the cloud for further use. Anything on the screen we can capture. Let's look at another module. Let's go to the BCM. And I'm going to read codes. And right off the bat, we see all these codes. And we're looking at now the TPMS. I want to capture this for the consumer. So all I got to do is a couple of things. I can, print, I can hit print, and it's going to print the image right to the printer. We can save the image as a JPEG, a PDF. Or, or what I can do is hold the camera down, and it takes a picture of the screen capture. We have technical support using the phone, so they can call up and we can help them. We actually have support right from the tool, so they would go right to the tool, it automatically goes and shows you your account, and you can actually get in touch with us right from the tool. And the third way of doing tech support is we can actually remote into this tool while you're in the car. But better than that, if you had five shops, Jim, and you had one fantastic tech, he can tie into any of the tools that we just sold you. Now the good tech can just go right on the internet, tie into the tool, and make believe he's in front of the car, which he's in front of the tool to fix it. Well, that's really great information. So all the technology that we have available today is all encompassed in modern scan tool systems. Thank you so much for sharing this information with us, and I'm sure it's going to help.